thank you thank you ma'am yeah rightly so rightly so yeah we make it you know as much fun as a real thing you know so you don't think that you know you're on basically a laptop you know you think you're just there i'd love to read those books meera you know i feel like just coming and sitting there and reading the books you know huge collection you have a full library there she is too studious so when should we be going live i think we should be 5:30 isn't it yeah it's already yep yeah so marita everything ready all set yes yes okay yes, can we go on live on youtube that's a really small cup of coffee yes jay please go live yeah. so yeah. now we are live on youtube so for the moisturizer we, we are live can we have the first are we able to see the yeah. participants no no okay later <clears throat> yeah so should we begin uh, great sure yeah. thanks thanks ma'am so a uh, very good evening to all the uh, dermatology fraternity out there who are joining here across india and outside maybe uh, very good evening from dr reddy's medical team and dr sujit narayan part of the medical team here and it's a privilege and an honor uh, to be hosting this uh, particular indian women dermatologic associations in iwda it's a real honor for us because one uh, we are really uh, illustrious speakers out here really are uh, and no no strangers in the field of dermatology so uh, for the next one hour or one and a half hour i'm sure uh, the message of role of moisturizers in very uh, severe dry conditions like psoriasis acne atopic dermatitis and rosacea will be taken forward by our moderator dr rashmi sarkar ma'am uh, whom i'm just going to introduce in a while to take forward this particular webinar can we have the next slide please the dr rashmi sarka ma'am as you all know no stranger to the field of dermatology in india and abroad she is the professor of dermatology at the hardinger medical college delhi is uh, president iidvl delhi state branch 2018 national secretary iidvl let me take some time to go through for those of you uh, who are still trying to know her so pardon me she obviously is the chief founder and president of pigmentary disorders society she has been the former secretary general of aspcr editor in chief lot of work in pigment international lot of uh, editorial uh, responsibilities out there in all the journals i'll not name everything out there but she is obviously the founding president of joint wds as well she is the vice president of international society of dermatology a lot more on the list than you can see on the slide without wasting much time i will hand over to dr rashmi rashmi ma'am to take this meeting forward over to you ma'am thank you very much can we have the full screen please yeah can you just close the slide show yeah thank you very much dr sujit chalo yeah please do put it on mute rest of the people and uh, good evening everyone thanks dr sujit for that introduction um, but i think you know there are one or two points that i would definitely would have liked you know to enumerate which uh, have not really been highlighted first and foremost i am a professor in dermatology which i think is very important you know i've been teaching undergraduates and postgraduates for the last 23 years so this is something that has not come out in the introduction and currently i am a professor in lady harding medical college new delhi and i was in molana azad medical college government medical college chandigarh as well as in saptarjang hospital and medical college before a pass out an md pass out from pgi chandigarh and i think most importantly i am also the editor in chief of pigment international a journal i think which we are all very proud of and uh, besides that i think for us academics is everything so i've also been the editor of 14 books 180 
published articles and journals as well as 75 chapters and most importantly besides this i have also been the vice uh, the national secretary of iadbl you know in 2014 15 before that i was the national joint secretary of iadbl in 2012 12, and also the president of the iadbl delhi state branch in 2018 and then again in the international scenario i am the vice president in the international society of dermatology have remained on the board of directors in women's dermatologic society as well as the chair of their international affairs committee i think that's important because we are going to be talking about the indian women's derm association currently i am also the chair of the international mentorship committee of the international society of dermatology so i think these are pertinent because these will be very important to today's talk somewhere or the other so i have highlighted them uh, i'd like to say about the indian women's dermatologic association or the iwda as we call it we are all very proud members of that right now and i am the president of the iwda i must tell you that it began way back in 2009 when we talk to the main women's dermatologic society which is based in usa which stands for physicians mentors and leaders as women women have always been around but what is most important is they have not really been in leadership positions that's what the us based society has really taught us to celebrate us as physicians as mentors and leaders we took this forward through several meetings over several years nearly after a decade we thought that we should have a little society in india because we have to have our meetings we have to carry on socially relevant community work so here we are in 2018 we actually had the indian women's dermatologic association which does work very closely in liaison with the international women's dermatologic society so number one what we do is you know we do have our little meetings where we have scientific deliberations our focus is on scientific deliberations one second practice management because that is something that influences all of us last but not the least is slice of life what are we if you know we are not the human beings we are in our lives and that is the most important part that is the slice of life that we have we all talk focus on our personal lives and how to balance it with the um, professional so as a part of that we do socially relevant work where we are doing community work for destitute women in the shelters that is a part of the global shelter project and we also have a focused leadership program which we have reached out to you that is what it is doing and besides that we have a news letter and we have these educational webinars which you have right in front of all of you and this is the fourth in the series that is of the educational you know workshops this is purely a scientific one we have had the slice of life and the practice management ones where we have talked about how to look after the staff that is in the covid era so we are looking at socially relevant you know uh, topics also with that if you want to become a member reach out to us go to the website www.indianwomensterm.com i repeat www.indianwomensterm.com or you can even reach out to us at indianwomensterm@gmail.com so that's it and with that not standing between you and the academic deliberation i'm going to first introduce my very you know uh, esteemed panelists i'm very proud to have them here could we have the first slide please you know the topic of today the role of moisturizers we've talked about them but we'll be specially focusing on psoriasis acne rosacea and atopic dermatitis and last but not the least sensitive skin so we're going to keep it just practical can we have the next please next please so i'm really very happy and very proud to have with us dr rakesh bharti sir welcome sir and he is a consultant dermatologist a very senior one at bharti derma care and research center in amritsar he has been a member of various you know associations like ima indian association of leprologists iadbl and he's not only remained the secretary 
but also the president of the Punjab, Himachal, GNK, and Chandigarh branch. And uh, he has 30 publications in international and national journals and several key publications, several you know uh, chapters that is in very important textbooks, including even some of our Indian books like the Handbook of Psychodermatology and so on. So once again, we welcome you here, sir, to share you know our thoughts and ideas. Next, please. So our next panelist, again, I'm very proud to have is Dr. Madhuri Agarwal. She's a very active member of our Indian Women's Derm Association. She is a founder and medical director of Yavana Aesthetics Clinic. Well, with over 15 years of experience, she is a name to reckon with in the field of dermatology and aesthetics, an active trainer on the art and technique of lasers, facial rejuvenation, anti-aging, and dermal fillers. She gets invited frequently to serve in the panel of various prestigious dermatological and plastic surgeons in societies all over the world, as well as in India, to showcase her key expertise on skin and hair care. Welcome, Madhuri. Thank you, ma'am. So next, can I have the next? Because we'll just go you know, next. So we come to Dr. Mira James. And Dr. Mira James, again, is somebody we are very proud of in IWDA. And she is an acknowledged authority on cosmetic dermatology. She has been an invited faculty to various international, national, and state conferences and has conducted various workshops on the different cosmetic dermatology treatments, including chemical peels, lasers, botulinum toxin, and filler injections. Can we just go back to one more slide, please? Welcome, Mira. So once again, we have Dr. Roma Pandi. She's a consultant dermatologist and dermato surgeon at Pandi Hospital, Chandigarh. She has been a postgraduate of JN Medical College, Belgaum, Karnataka, a senior resident in PGI, Chandigarh, a senior lecturer in Government Medical College, Chandigarh. In fact, she followed me after I left Government Medical College, Chandigarh. So we share a history. And she has been in private practice from 2004 till date. She's been more than 20 years experience in the field of dermatological and venerological diseases and presented many papers of national level conferences and more than 20 publications in national and international journals. Currently, she is also holding the post of Vice President of Chandigarh Dermatologic Society since 2018, the Tri-City Forum of Dermatologists. Welcome, Roma. Thank so you. can we have the next piece? Well, he may be last, but not the least. He chivalrously stands, you know, between, uh, you know, after all the women. And Dr. Dr. Bhavesh Swankar, who is a senior consultant at Swankar Super Speciality Center and Indore, also is uh, has been a very good friend to our Indian Women's Dermatologic Association. He's been a friend in need, hence a friend indeed. So he's been practicing aesthetic and clinical dermatology since more than 15 years. He's the honorary general secretary of Pigmentary Disorder Society, formerly secretary of MP branch of IIT Will, and president of the Dermatology Society of Indore. He's conducted various workshops for Pigmentary Con, Cuticon, Axicon, among others. He's a reviewer in Journal of Cosmetic Dermatologist, given presentations in various national and international meet. And field of interest is again lasers, pigmentary disorders, and anti-aging therapy. So welcome, Bhavesh. So um, now I think we're done with the introduction. So we'll go over to a little and, presentation. And before we go ahead, one important thing. Uh, yeah. we, I want to uh, tell all our viewers that, you know, we already started getting these messages from the participants that we want you as a future I president-elect for IDVL. So, you know, we all are voting for you this time. So we see a new women leadership for our future associations. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you for your wishes, Madhuri. So we'll now talk about, you know, moisturizers. So we've already talked about moisturizers. What is going to be new in this particular panel is the view of the different uh, esteemed panels that you have. So traditionally, what are moisturizers? These are believed to be topical agents which inhibit transepidermal water loss, TWL, by occlusion. So water originates in the deeper epidermal layers and moves 
shifts upwards to hydrate the cells in the stratum corneum, eventually being lost to evaporation. Remember that we need to have about 10 to 30 percent of moisture in the epidermis so that the skin is soft and supple. Occlusive moisturizer thus prevents the dehydration of the stratum corneum. Next, please. Much more is, yeah. Can I go back to the next, please? Can I go back to the previous one? Previous one, please. Next, please. Okay, please hold on. Much more is known about the epidermis, the stratum corneum, and what we have is the bricks and mortar model, which I'm going to just show you. So it has the bricks, which are the keratinocytes, and the mortar, which is basically the cementing material or the lipids. Now, loss of these intercellular lipids, which are the three lipids? The ceramides, the cholesterol, ceramides is 40 to 50 percent, cholesterol 25 percent, fatty acid about 10 to 15 percent that forms the bilayers, damages the water barrier function. The stratum corneum then calls into action the repair mechanism. So can we have the next? So we have this little pink wall that you can see. This is our natural skin barrier. So what is the what are the bricks? They are the keratinocytes. What you have in the light pink on top is the lipid, you know, lamella, as I told you, made up of these three things. And that has to remain intact. When it is intact, it looks like this nice brick wall. And the moment you start losing water, there are going to be cracks through the channels, inviting irritants and noxious agents, microorganisms inside. So it starts looking like a wall that has been broken. Next, please. So what do these keratinocytes contain? The natural moisturizing factor, which is a natural mixture of amino acids, lactates, urea, and electrolytes, which help the stratum corneum retain water. We always talk about natural moisturizing factor in some of the creams. So remember that. Dry skin is noted when the moisture content is less than 10%, and there is loss of continuity of the stratum corneum. Next, please. So the categories of moisturizers. This may look like a very busy slide, but I'd like to tell you very briefly that in the various classes of moisturizers, you have actually four categories. One is the emollients. These are basically saturated and unsaturated. That is variable, uh, you know, length hydrocarbons. And the most important thing about it is they resemble the natural skin barrier. So they try to take place of the natural skin barrier in case, you know, it is impaired. And... These again are made up of things like, you know, squalene, cholesterol, fatty acids like oleic acid, linoleic acid, and fatty alcohol. So this is the emollients. And they take care of the skin dryness, roughness, and papillosquamous disorders and routine skin care. Humectants. Now, humectants are low molecular weight, you know, substances with water attracting properties. So humectants is probably the oldest moisturizer that we know. I remember as a child, my mother used to tell my father to get from the hospital glycerin, you know, to use on our faces in winter, something that I really hated because glycerin is very sticky. Have you ever wondered? The only reason why it looks non-sticky is when you have some add-ons to it, something like hyaluronic acid, which makes it less sticky. So again, this is something which you can use for xerosis, ichthyosis. And it can have a little bit of irritation. That's because of the urea and the lactic acid. So glycerol, propylene, glycol, pantothol, then hyaluronic acid, urea, alpha hydroxy acids are your humectants. Then are the occlusives. So these are oils and waxes which form an inert layer over the skin and physically block any transepidermal water loss. So these are thick and work against xerosis, atopic dermatitis, prevention of contact dermatitis. These are a little messy to apply, but probably these have, you know, a very good level of evidence. And so these are petrolatum, beeswax, again, mineral oil, silicones, lanolin, zinc oxide, and so on. Once again, the last are the protein rejuvenators. Now, these are not the normal ones, but they are small molecular weight proteins which are added on so that they act against anti-aging. So you have collagen, you have elastin, as well as keratin, which can be used as a skin rejuvenator against aging and photo, you know, damaged skin. Next, please. So again, can I have the next? Role of moisturizers, broadly speaking, moisturizing action. 
This is a vital action. It increases the water content. So hydration smooths the skin surface while flattening the valleys between the skin contour ridges. It also makes the skin surface soft, more extensible and pliable. And the moisturizing action of emollients is evident maximum 30 minutes to one hour after their use and usually lasts for four hours. Now, anti-inflammatory action. Many moisturizers inhibit the production of pro-inflammatory prostanoids by blocking cyclooxygenase activity, thus have a soothing effect on the inflamed skin. So can I have the next, please? Antimitotic. Now, this is very useful because mineral oils have low-grade antimitotic activity on the epidermis. They are very useful for inflammatory diseases like psoriasis. Antiprudetic action. So emollients down-regulate the cytokines, thus reducing the itching. Furthermore, cooling effect following evaporation water from the skin surface after using water-based moisturizer has anti-prudetic effect. Again. Next, please. Photoprotective action. On their own, they don't have photoprotective action, but when you have certain things like vitamin E and other antioxidants added to them, that is when the moisturizers could possibly have a photoprotective action. What is their end result? Miscellaneous action. Quality of life is very much improved. Having a smooth and hydrated skin plays a good role in our social life and psychological satisfaction. Imagine how you would feel with a dry skin that you want to scratch again and again. Antimicrobial action is when you have few add-ons, you know, which I, we will be talking about when you have therapeutic devices added to moisturizers. Some of them act against skin surface microbes. Wound healing. Now, hyaluronic acid is known to play a role also. So they have multiple roles. Next, please. Now, uses of moistures, broadly speaking, we'll be talking about it today, is in various eczemas with atopic dermatitis, hand eczema, nubular, stasis, and estiotic eczema. Disorders of keratinization, ichthyosis, psoriasis, palmoplantar keratodermas, lichen planus, then dermatological conditions secondary to underlying disorders like diabetes, thyroid disorders, renal disease, pruritus of pregnancy, and so on. Other dermatological disorders like lichen uh, simplex chronicus, we all know that, acne vulgaris, rosacea, and again, elderly patients. Then maintenance of skin integrity in certain conditions also, like elderly patients again, neonates and infants, and so on. And miscellaneous action in contact dermatitis, anti-aging, xerosis, and so many other things. Next, please. So what are the properties of an ideal moisturizer? Next, please. Currently, we are not living in an ideal world. You know, I think COVID has made us realize that nothing, nothing can be ever said to be ideal again. But we can definitely hope for an ideal moisturizer. While at home, we can have the luxury of moisturizing. So this reduces and prevents further transepidermal water loss, restores the skin barrier, hypoallergenic and non-comedogenic, it's absorbed immediately, providing immediate hydration, cosmetically acceptable. We don't want something very greasy and affordable. So you want many things at the same time. Next, please. Next, moisturizer for atopic dermatitis. We know that this is a condition which has a lot of moisturizers. Now, moisturizers are basic requirement, not only for, uh, you know, the optimal treatment of AD, regarding, regardless of the severity, it's also a therapeutic agent which can be used at least in mild, you know, atopic dermatitis. You can cut down the use of steroids. So it significantly reduces the severity of AD and signs of inflammation, including pruritus, erythema, fissuring, lichenification, prevents AD flares, and helps to decrease the amount of prescription medicine needed for treatment. Next, please. Customizing moisturizer routine based on the skin type. You know, it's not one moisturizer for all kinds of skin types. Next, please. Some of the right strategies that we can follow again for atopic dermatitis would be avoid taking long hot showers no matter what the season. They have to be just about five minutes and hot shower strip skin of its natural oil and make it even more dry. Always bathe in warm water. And that too, not for longer than 10 minutes. Five minutes is ideal for an AD child. Wipe off or pat dry, that is with the help of a 
towel while the skin is still damp that is when you apply your moisturizer next please it's good to read the label there are certain things you should look out while buying a good moisturizer so maybe you could look for these of course the more you have the more costly they would be so ceramides and hyaluronic acid this helps in keeping it moisturized and it helps the skin to hold water dimethicone and glycerin they help to draw water into the skin both that is from the dermis and from outside and retain it lanolin mineral oil and petroleum jelly they help in retaining water they are kind of occlusives Petroleum jelly, in fact, has stood the test of time, and it's an immediate barrier repairing effect in delipidized stratum corneum. Next, please. Skin care for oily, acne-prone skin. So we are going to ask the panelists, but I'm just going to touch on briefly. Oily skin produces not only enlarged pores, but both, you know, whiteheads and blackheads. <clears throat> both in the morning and night is an effective way. So do not use harsh soaps. as much as possible if the oiliness doesn't seem to go with the use of mild facial cleanser we could go for a product that includes glycolic acid or a beta hydroxy acid these can help to fight both acne and the oiliness oil free aqueous gel and silicone containing skin care compositions are proven to show improved oil control next please so oiliness can vary with weather and can get worse due to hormonal imbalance we've all faced it you know in different parts of our life stress exposure to heat and even too much humidity like the weather we have now so we need the right skin care routine it's important to use a gentle cleanser maybe not more than twice a day use a non comedogenic product which does not clog pores do not stop and do not try to squeeze out the active acne lesions next please One important thing is people with oily skin think they do not need to moisturizing their skin it's not really true choose a moisturizer which is oil free or less oily because it can have a negative cycle you know producing more oil next please so you can have a combination skin most of us actually have a combination skin when the skin gets oily around your forehead nose chin area t zone and remains dry at the cheeks so this is combination and again you have to follow the same skin care of exfoliation cleansing moisturizer but you might have to do a spot treatment for the dry skin and the oily skin next please so again for the oily skin also the combination skin this gentle cleansing toning is something that is needed to repair the skin a toner free of irritants like alcohol certain ingredients you'll always read these should be there like fragrance free is most important free of citrus oils and so on go for toners containing skin ingredients identical uh, skin identical ingredients and antioxidants protection from the sun it may be good to have a sunscreen with physical sunscreens or inorganic sunscreens like titanium dioxide or zinc oxide and iron oxide use gentle exfoliating products and spot treatment as i mentioned for the oily area as well as the dry area next please so uh, again main thing is that it's very important to choose a sunscreen with an spf of 30 or higher and avoid bar soaps or bar cleansers if you really have you know a skin which is a mixed kind of a thing you could just use maybe a gentle cleanser or a scented especially in atopic dermatitis next please that this brings me to sensitive skin which we'll discuss more what is this if your skin gets burnt tan easily and reacts to sudden weather change and certain cosmetics and the patient complains there's a burning there's a tightening your skin type is considered sensitive it's pretty hard to deal with sensitive skin and a thorough testing should be done before buying the skin products this is only for those you know with a sensitive skin your daily skin care again is the same moisturizing cleansing and spot treatment but you may have to customize next please so this skin sensitivity is due to a combination of factors which we will discuss most importantly it's a tendency to hyper react to topical agents and you can have redness itching burning and dryness and treatment with special topical skin care formulations can reduce overall skin sensitivity next please 
So avoid touching your face. It transfers bacteria on your hand to the face, which can make the condition worse. I think this is something we've been doing really well now. With COVID around, it has taught us not to touch our faces. Avoid excessive exposure to skin damaging environmental factors like sun and wind or excessive heat and cold. Soap-free cleansers can be used in liquid facial cleansers as they cause less skin irritation. Avoid products containing antibacterials or deodorant ingredients, alcohol, retinoids, or alpha hydroxy acids. Go slow on them and use a sunscreen with an SPF 30 or higher. We need to read labels again if we can. Next, please. So rosacea is a skin is a skin disease that affects people over 30 years of age. There's a flushed red face with sensitive dry skin that may burn or sting. It can also cause burning and soreness in the eyes. And we know that the skin that is with the help of the papules and the pustules can really turn coarse and thicker. And the structure becomes, the texture becomes very, very irregular. Next, please. There's a lot of redness. What I'd like to say is these are some of the global guideline recommendations for the moisturizers. The Indian Journal of Dermatology, which says that the level of evidence, again, is 1B because it can cut down the use of steroids, definitely in eczema. That is one very good you know, help that we have with these. And again, it's important because it also maintains the integrity of the skin. So... The main factor here is that it has a steroid sparing effect when you're using a lot of moisturizers and emollients, you know, with the topical steroids. And from the panel, we will now get to know, you know, how we can do that, how we can make it better. So you should use moisturizers about twice a day and it can be used more, but you know, you can be used more frequently, but do not even use it, you know, more than they are required. So these are some of the recommendations and they are time tested for atopic dermatitis for dry skin, acne, rosacea, psoriasis, and so on. So with that, next please. I'm going to talk last time, what's new? That's the physiological lipid-based therapy or prescription emollient devices or PED. This is the newer class of moisturizers, which has distinct ratios of lipids that resemble physiological composition. Remember, I talked about the lipid barrier. So ceramide, cholesterol, essential fatty acids are present in the ratio 3 is to 1 is to 1 or 1 is to 1 is to 1. Final concentration of at least 5% of the weight of the stratum corneum. Final pH is less than or about 5 in order to compensate for the elevated pH of the inflamed skin. Furthermore, fatty acids in this therapy activate the PPAR alpha, reducing the inflammation. They also prevent side effects of topical steroid therapy and prevent flares and enhance production of antimicrobial peptides. So if you look at it, what we have in the bucket are some of these prescription emollient devices. They are more expensive. And what they have is, you know, ceramides, natural moisturizing factors, all these added on it. So this is what we are also going to be talking about. Next, please. So these have some additional, you know, actions like inactivation of calicreens, inhibition of pathogen colonization and activation of beta glucocerebrodinase and acidic sphingobilinase leading to ceramide production needed to form the extracellular lamellar bilayers. Next, please. So if you want to read more, it's not ended. You can always read about moisturizers. This is my little book on moisturizers which was published in 2017 and it's available with the JP publishers. This is a little handbook you can read. Next, please. So now I'm going to come to the panel discussion as I promised, and uh, I'm sure that there'll be a lot of exciting things. I think we also will be having questions coming, but first, you know, we'll set the ball rolling. Can I have the next slide, please? So first, I'd just like to say a hello, you know, to some of the people who've logged in, Dr. Smitha Chakote, hello and good evening from all of us here. Gyandi Verma, good evening. Raghunandan, Dr. Raghunandan, you know, um, welcome again. Then again, we are going to be uh, taking up some of the questions now. And uh, you can also join in after we do, you know, you can raise up your hand and we can do a first and important question is, what is sensitive skin and how often do we see it in our practice? So can I ask Dr. Uh, 
Rakesh Bharti, sir, this question. Is he here? Is Dr. Rakesh Bharti, sir, here? So I think Dr. Rashmi, Dr. Rakesh Bharti is not able to connect. He somehow okay. lost the connection. Okay, can you just get him online? And my meanwhile, I'll ask, you know, maybe Dr. Roma Pandi. Roma, would you like to take up, you know, what is the sensitive skin and how often do you see it in your practice? So, uh, skin sensitivity is somehow um, been a very um, close to heart topic because I somehow have landed up speaking on a lot of, uh, in a lot of conferences and uh, I have uh, begin to believe that uh, almost all of us have had sensitive skin at some point of the time or the other. But sensitive skin has more to do with the patient, patient perception and it is about the patient complaining about uh, burning or um, itching or redness uh, on applying any particular product or even just naturally without using any product they just uh, even with water at times they complain of sensitivity so that i believe is sensitive skin and it could be triggered by a varied uh, varied number of reasons environmental reasons cosmetic reasons uh, hereditary genetic reasons or some certain skin conditions which can lead to skin sensitivity and yeah we i think we see it very commonly in our practice so how uh, common would you say I'm, 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 you're back you're back just yes, in time you know like you're like yeah. you know the uh, hero sir you know where are you you know I'm here. I'm here. yeah you who see? comes right just in time you know sir so roma uh -huh. started i wanted to ask you this question say what is sensitive skin and how often do you see it in your practice my answer to that will be that uh, are you am i audible yes sir very much yes, sir. okay so sensitive skin basically if you ask me 40 percent of the people we come across think that they have a sensitive skin now i i always used to think that what is this question that i have right. a sensitive skin doctor do something so then i realized i can tell the audience some tips for that Number one tips, what are the symptoms of the sensitive skin? Is that tips, remember tips, T-I-P-S. T is for okay. tightness, uh, tightness of skin, I for itching, pain for uh, P for pain, and S for stinging. These are the signs which are distressing and people often complain and our eyes really cannot see. But we have to understand that there are some areas which are more sensitive like nasolabial folds and below the eyes, they are very, uh, sensitive areas. So sen people think that they have a sensitive skin whenever they use something. Now, it has been classified by various ways. Uh, Mills and Berger uh, classified it like clinical, subclinical, historical, and none. You can remember like that. Clinical, by when I say it means associated diseases like atopic dermatitis, seborrheic, rosacea, ectiosis. And subclinical, when there are no triggers, there is no sensitivity. And historical, there is a history of some sunburn once in a while or a contact dermatitis. And sometimes there is no complaints. This is a Milson budget. And then there is a serial, a French uh, group has uh, given a classification in which it says, oh, in which it says that the diet, that means alcohol, stress, Rashmi initially said all that. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, very much so. Okay. And certain temperature changes can cause erythema. So D and then E and then C and A, DECA is the uh, acronym I have designed. Diet, that means alcohol, stress, sudden temperature changes related erythema. Environment, when there is exposure to wind or cold or uh, air conditioner. And then cosmetics, when the use of cosmetics is done. And then uh, sometimes it is related to the menstrual cycle. In the slang language, it is called anti-flow. Anti so I, I labeled the serial classification as DECA, diet, environment, cosmetics, and anti-flow. So 40% people think that they have a sensitive skin. And why it occurs? This is something important. We have to understand it occurs because of disruption of the skin barrier. If there is more sebum as in oily skin and they have more breakouts and they use unsuitable products, then the pH is very important. If the product which is being used by a patient has a pH, which is not as the normal of 5.5, there is a problem. Then use of chemicals like retinoids, hydroxy acids, uh, especially when used in high dosages can cause uh, sensitive skin. 
then many a times these days we say this is herbal there is nothing wrong in it like rosemary sandalwood arnica chamomile they are used they can cause allergic contacted dermatitis and can make the skin sensitive similarly sometimes the natural oils like perfumes bath oils moisturizers shampoos jojoba oil tea tree oil i mean these are fashionable things but they can create a sensitive skin and then certain makeup ingredients like baba like dyes fragrance and the most common thing is uh, vitamin e and c people are now it is saying heavy metals like nickel chromium or cobalt in eye shadows and sunless tanners all these things can cause sensitive skin so i think we see a lot of patients with sensitive skin and uh, that is why you know moisturizer uh, industry is now 1 billion dollar in america great <laughs> yeah so i think you know it's very well summarized you know both by uh, dr bharti sir as well as roma that you know initially we always thought that you know people are just complaining of something you know which is not there a sensitive skin why do we say that because there are symptoms without signs that is the issue with sensitive skin it's a state of hyper reactivity of the skin but you have yes. since symptoms of burning there is little bit of redness if you're able to see tightness of the skin but you don't have so many symptoms as very rightly summarized which i'm going to summarize here is there could be three reasons one is due to impairment of the barrier function and this impairment is when you have that in atopic dermatitis patient so they are predisposed to having a kind of a sensitive skin the second again could be when you have a heightened neurostimulatory effect of the skin okay so that again happens in conditions like rosacea and this is also due to people who are more prone to have certain receptors in their skin certain thermal receptors that is which are able to have that neurostimulatory effect last we postulated again would be a immunological disorder so this again is something which you don't know, doesn't have much of an evidence there isn't much anything to prove that so probably we go only with these two things as as rightly pointed out by all of you it can be triggered off by several tropical agents which are there which include cosmetics many of your applications which are there home detergents <clears throat> home cleaners and so on environment hot cold wind air conditioning and so many other contact irritants you know your applications your medications but this in very short is about sensitive skin and even they need moisturizers which we will go to come to little later how often do you see it in your practice i would see it maybe in every one in every 25 patients 22 25 patient who says that my skin burns you know that kind of a thing then you have to really see whether there is really something disease or not so you have to come back on that so that is something that we have to look into can i have the next slide please dr rashmi can i add something here yeah uh, how how do we test whether a person is having a sensitive yes. skin or not hai na yeah. so there is a, a theory or a test in which we apply 5% or 10% lactic acid in the nasolabial area when the person is sweating and the stinging comes so it makes positive alternatively we can use chloroform methanol and sorbic acid etc even saline yeah even saline here so the yeah. saline on the other side here yeah. that's how we can test that whether person whatever he is saying or she is saying is true or not right so he has given some of the ideas and the other ways of testing is you can even strip off there are tests which we don't do so many stripping off you know the epidermis then trans epidermal water loss which can be managed even measuring the skin ph and so on there are a lot of scientific test remember for baby products it's written that skin tested for the baby so it's also done in vitro testing so i'm now going to come to the practical questions i'll ask some of you how to choose moisturizers for uh, neonates madhuri would you like to take that up so ma'am uh, i feel moisturizers for neonates one first thing is as you mentioned it has to be tested so paraben free silicon free those those are very essentials and very bland ones maybe containing petroleum Uh, jelly yes. and lanolin which are soothing to the uh, and maybe dimethicone just few basic ingredients not too many of them so that's what i would look you know uh, in my yeah probably papers. more of petrolatum because it's very bland actually you know something like petrolatum is so bland lanolin and all those things are also fine but supposing the child is having atopic dermatitis then neonates you won't be able to detect atopic dermatitis yeah. because 
it's about one month of age but i would probably do a very bland you know emollient for me do you agree with that bhavesh yeah actually uh, apart from that what i would like to say that uh, the it should be pregnancy free that's very important because yeah. especially those who are having sensitive skin you know like uh, atopic dermatitis uh, it may lead to a lot of sensitivity to that and the it should be preservative free even i sometimes consider white soft paraffin uh, also uh, effective or any vegetable oil is also good for neonates and infants okay. yeah vegetable oil is something we have in our setup Dr. isn't it in her presentation told yeah. that to apply a, a, a moisturizer or emollient on a wet body and a child and uh, many a people who cannot afford this costly moisturizers can do with the uh, coconut oil coconut i believe oil. yes coconut oil is the coconut best coconut oil is time tested very good you know so it's lot also anti inflammatory you know, property also comparatively cheap and all that which is there so uh, yeah. Mira, would you like to, you know, tell us that how would you choose a moisture for infants and toddlers? Infants and toddlers, like no. Actually, when I started my practice, uh, I didn't or I wasn't seeing much of atopic dermatitis, but somehow I feel the incidence of atopic dermatitis has started increasing, and we do see a lot of like this uh, units infants uh, coming with atopic dermatitis, and they have got like okay, most often the parents actually like okay would have applied. Like okay, multiple things, and then they come to us like okay with oozing lesions and the things. So, so usually I tell them like that moisturization part is really really important. I think similarly we also see a lot of this uh, uh, like okay, I written dermatitis associated with the toilet seat. I, I do see. I think you also would be seeing it, no? Because this uh, toilet seats over the time this. plastic gets eroded and where it comes in contact with the posterior part of the thigh they develop that kind of dermatitis so all these kinds of things no so i always tell them like okay you have to actually take care because here people have the habit of actually applying the oil before bath which actually makes the skin further more dry so it actually takes a lot of time to convince them no you have to apply oil only after bath so that you can actually maintain the moisture better So go for the fragrance free thing. But the thing is, like, you no, know, the parents as of now, like, okay, are more bothered about the color and the sunscreen, you no, know, rather than moisturizing. I don't know. Even when they come with the toddlers, they say, like, okay, yeah, doctor, yeah, like, okay, I can apply the moisturizer, but how can I make the skin more fair? Do you actually feel that, you no, know, happening? Because I find it very, like, okay, the thing is, like, even about the toddlers and even, like, okay, even if the baby is a little dark, they get too white. Read that when you actually tell them about the moisturizer, they are more bothered. Like, okay, no, no, doctor, like, okay, yeah, moisturizing I can do. Like more than that, I would need some like okay, fairness agents. So that is something I find very weird. Why people are so bothered about this thing, even for these neon lights too. Like, okay, so what can you do? Can you start the treatment for fairness? Uh, when this concept is coming, so whatever you like, okay, them to apply, they will be asking about. So will that make the skin fair? I don't really. You don't know, like actually, do any one of you get that kind of problem? Like, okay, how do you, like, Madhu? Yeah, I think you know this uh, preoccupation with you know with the skin color. Yeah. Now we have realized that it's not India which was the highest; it's also happening in the USA. You know, this color discrimination that is another story altogether. We, the thing is that I think there's an obsession when you're dealing with a small child, even the five to twelve to twelve year old child. Everybody wants to use a moisture. Moisturizer, which is going to have a skin which is very soft as a baby, and basically it's a hidden agenda that you want a very you know fair or a very white looking you know skin. Yeah. So that is you have to tell them that a moisturizer doesn't do that. So I think it's very much there in the south also, and there in the north also. So yeah. So you want to say uh, okay, Roma, would you like to take up that? How would you you know choose a moisturizer for an adolescent teenager? so when we talk about adolescents uh, dr rashmi we are uh, we need to know and I'm, we need to also understand they are in the pubescent age group and they have a lot of hormonal changes because of which the skin is undergoing a lot of changes also so there are um, uh, there are uh, children who had very dry skin suddenly towards adolescent they start developing an oily skin and start breaking out and getting acne uh, and then in the winters those same patients feel dryness in the skin so we need to um, see what kind of skin the patient is having at the, at the time of the prescription and if they have an oily skin 
we need to ask them to use oil free moisturizers that's very pertinent because uh, that could lead to otherwise worsening of their acne and uh, if they have a combination skin also i usually suggest an oil free moisturizer uh, because they tend to otherwise use it in the uh, the, the water based or oil based moisturizers they tend to use it in the uh, t zone and then leads to blockages and acne further ahead for dry skin of course the adolescents who, who are not you have dry skin maybe fake uh, skin or because of ongoing sensitive skin then yes we do such try and uh, prevent the transepidermal water loss yeah so i think you know she has talked about because you have both an oily skin you know which is an acne prone skin and you also have to fight the dryness so you may have to use something which is silicone based actually a silicone based you know uh, product which would be more oil free i think that is and what here, again i would want to add is you know we see a lot of adolescents or teenagers wherein they were frank atopic dermatitis on their body as well as they have this you know this body yeah. acne on their face so you have to really educate them yeah. teenagers yes. are very lazy so to really educate on the to do two different types of moisturizers for these people so then you can take up the next question also on acne you know madhuri yeah. you know the moisturizer for acne let's say that you have a teenager with acne so so for acne generally we'll have to one you know we have to understand the teenagers as i mentioned are lazy they don't want to use too many products so we have to really you know be smart and use ingredients which will work on the acne as well as give that hydration bit so i like to pick up things which have you know salicylic acid along with that a little bit of you know hydration say you know tea tree oil or maybe a little bit of you know uh, uh, aloe vera which they are still ready to tolerate and i like the formulation to be a gel based one because they don't like that sticky greasy so the formulation part also yeah. is important so you need to uh, make sure you use that and try to pick up ingredients which are not very irritating or drying also so a sunscreen in the morning and a night moisturizer they are still sorted if i give two three things in the morning they were not very happy with it yeah i think that so, is something uh, very yeah yeah i would like to add here something so uh, most of these patients whom we are treating for acne we are also they are either on either some kind of uh, topical retinoids or oral retinoids and uh, keeping in mind uh, they will always land up having some dry skin issues along with yeah. uh, during their treatment journey so we definitely need to have a moisturizer in their routine which has to be oil free and water based so yeah silicon dimethicon these are some products which you can add keeping away definitely uh, yeah. the mineral oil or the petrolatums or the uh, waxes out of the way right for for a topic that matter yeah. i add yes. here that we should remember that ointments are usually better than creams which are usually better than lotions which are usually better than so we have to know that what we have to go and what area we are using if it right. is a head then maybe the gels are better uh, options for that and yeah, if so there is something oozing somewhere then we have to use a lotion rather than a cream or an ointment so That's you basic. know yeah so would you also take up this question on you know what moisturizer you'll choose for psoriasis psoriasis my best choice is i use vaseline because otherwise also when you make 4% salicylic yes. then vaseline mm. is the best so what i try to do is i give a combination of a steroid with salicylic acid or whatever vitamin d analog or whatever at one time right. and at one time vaseline that is the best uh, for i think yeah, it is something very good the occlusives you know work well yes and we also use a lot of coconut oil here you know because we use coconut oil because that's also something thick that can be used for for psoriasis i also like these butters you know the shea the coco butter yes. the mango butters they are really quite uh, hydrating this is something again so actually, these uh, butters come under emollients actually isn't it so these butters yeah. like mango we, butter and shea butter yes you want to say something bhavish yeah actually uh, when you talk about uh, like first i come to uh, acne which is uh, forgotten about uh why we need moisturizer in acne it is not uh, that the need of the skin but also like what ingredient you are using like if you are using benzoyl yes. peroxide it yeah, causes irritation and dryness as per is because of its irritant property basically when you use retinoids there is an exfoliation when the exfoliation is heightened there are a lot of micro fissures formation so in such cases where this micro fissure formation if you are using some lotion based moisturizer it causes a lot of burning sensation and patient right. feel very uncomfortable where you have to use something which has got more of emollient property which can you know cover the intracellular spaces and give a soothing effect 
अवेयर क्रीम बेस्ड मॉइस्चराइजर इज वेरी गुड इन दैट केस एंड पेशेंट आर वेरी सेटिस्फाइड बिकॉज Uh, the same way when you are giving uh, uh, oral uh, retinoid therapy that time also patient suffer the same thing yes so uh, by the time the patient uh, get used to of the uh, dryness part of the retinoids we have to uh, keep using something which is you know uh, a cream based moisturizer which uh, which was wonder in my practice and uh, all my patients are very comfortable of course adding a sunscreen to a moisturizer helps a more because of the sensitivity of the skin due to retinoids It, they are all photosensitizing agents so uh, this is a very important thing when we talk about psoriasis like uh, there is a lot of uh, you know breach of the barrier function of the skin actually the stratum yes. is almost lost so we have to be very careful in selecting a moisturizer it should be non allergenic also and uh, because we are going to use it for a long period of time so one thing is that is very important other thing is the convenience of application patient should be easily able to apply it should not be very messy or sticky and it should not be very costly also because larger area is required in more frequent maybe application so these are the very important factors when you are uh, advising a moisturizer to patient of psoriasis and we should that way if you go for uh, those uh, which are uh, paraffin based oils are very good or maybe vegetable oils like jojoba oil yeah vegetable oils large areas you can cover you know yeah and the uh, essential fatty acid containing uh, oils like the sunflower seed oil is very good in uh, essential fatty acids like arachidonic acid and uh, other ones so use this kind of uh, moisturizer contain they are very good in uh, psoriasis okay so meeta i'm going to go for the last question before i summarize that what would you like to give moisturizer for rosacea you know then i'll we'll briefly summarize and take some questions yeah. rosacea again has started increasing and like a okay, cow always prefer for a light moisturizer which actually doesn't have too much of fragrance or doesn't irritate and many a time like okay this patient say like okay so can i stick with the sunscreen like okay which actually contains a moisturizer too like okay so sometimes i tell them like okay because some of these patients doesn't like using too many products so like water based light moisturizer which doesn't irritate the skin which doesn't have any fragrance so that is something which i choose for rosacea and i do ask them like okay depending on like okay you can apply it multiple times so depending on your comfortability because different kinds of patients no some patients have extremely sensitive skin and their kind of like okay these patients also like okay differ in their choice but personally i tell them like a water based one would be the best one a very light fragrant free one so a light one is what you will be recommending yeah. basically so as before you summarize before yeah. you summarize i want to say something can i yeah yeah uh you know when we talk about uh, dry skin or uh, for whatever reason we talk about moisturizers i have a view that we should also remember the non pharmacological pharmacological methods of uh, moisturizing the skin and i tell my patient that it is from within that you can moisturize your uh, skin how by eating certain diets like add walnuts canola oil ground flaxseed oils eat vitamin rich e e rich diets for example green vegetables wheat germs drink lot of fluids stay yeah. away from sodas and drinks use a humidifier and then a balanced diet which contains garlic onion eggs asparagus yellow orange vegetables i mean i'm i'm trying to lay stress on diet right hydration sir so. moisturize the body from within also yeah it's going to be holistic you know that he's very rightly pointed out sir can i have the next slide before i summarize yeah so i think we've gone through all of them you know a very short summary before i'm going to take a few questions also from the audience in between i think we we all agree that for neonates you know and for small children we would like to use something which is more bland which stays on more and fragrance free all those things you know which have to be there so something like uh, you know white uh, paraffin or white soft paraffin or a mineral oil you know so or a petrol atom would work well petrol atom actually is the only one which has had a little studies on it you know some evidence on it there aren't too many studies on moisturizers head to head other thing which have had you know some studies are on coconut oil but then coconut oil also they have used the extra virgin you know coconut oil which you know is available in the market and is much more expensive than the normal coconut oil but again i'd like to say that the normal coconut oil also works very well we've used it in the north we have used it in the south east and the west everywhere it's the best and the thing is that the other things like mustard oil we know that there's a contact sensitization 
something that is very good is sunflower oil you know for babies because sunflower oil as compared to olive oil now shows that it has beneficial effects on the skin care as the child grows up and we have you know an adolescent child we have to You are audible now, madam. Rashmi. Yeah, we can hear you. Now, now we can hear. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, now I can hear her. Yeah, I don't know what happened. There was some issue, you know. Uh, ma'am, your okay. mic was mute. Now you can be audible. Okay. I don't know. It just happened, you know, out of the blue. No issue, ma'am. No so, issue. So you know, uh, that is the thing. You, so you will use something which has more or probably silicones. You all agree that you know when you have. acne prone skin and for the dry skin again you need something which is more cosmetically elegant you know for a teenager that is there is a difference there you know with a baby you can use plant you may want something more cosmetically accepted so maybe a nice emollient as madhuri mentioned all these shea butter and the mango butter and the cocoa butter they all have some antioxidants added to it i used to love their name you know and just because i wanted to use something with the name of cocoa butter you know it makes you feel so much better than using glycerin isn't it otherwise even plain <laughs> glycerin would do yeah they all are very aesthetic you know for a teenager and for psoriasis again it's a thick thing and you need to use it for a long time so maybe the vegetable oils you know the you know the petrolatum all those things you know they are the ones which have to be used you don't bother about the aesthetics to such an extent you want something thick okay Can I take up some questions from the audience? Yes, ma'am. I think that will make yes. it more interactive. So, uh, yeah, there are some questions from Dr. Taslim. Dr. Taslim Begum, thank you for being here. Good evening, ma'am. I would like to know while prescribing moisturizer, is it better to choose both humectant and occlusive, or only humectant or only occlusive? Kindly clarify regarding this, ma'am. So it's ma'am. So first, you know, uh, would you like to take it? One of the ma'ams, maybe uh, Roma. Do you want to take it before I'll also yeah. then pitch in? Yeah. Okay. So I think uh, we need to understand what are humectants and what are occlusives, and depending upon the the type of skin, how dry skin the patient has, we need to decide on that. So if we are having uh, a damaged and a dry skin, we need a humectant as well as occlusive because we need to repair the skin barrier as well as hydrate it. But if it is maybe just a uh, uh, dry skin alone, a humectant a cream or a moisturizer with humectant, something like glycerin or a wax or yes. petrolatum or dimethicone will do. But if we have a damaged and a dry skin with a uh, barrier uh, disrupted, we need something more uh, occlusive and humectant both. Yes. So I think she's really said it, and I think a good moisturizer, you'll agree, is a balance of all three. It has to have some emollient action, an occlusive and a humectant. It has to be balanced out. It's more aesthetically appealing. The other question is an atopic dermatitis. Can we advise patients to apply moisturizers first, then followed by topical steroids, or vice versa? Doctor Bharti, sir, would you like to take this question? Uh, I read this question, and I was thinking that there are now some. Uh... Preparations available which contain steroids with moisturizing agents. Yes, yes. so they are uh, actually good. We can do that. But if the doctor Taslim wants to mix also or do uh, vice versa, they can do it. There is no problem. Yeah. But it's better to use a combination. Anybody else has an answer to that? Uh, you want to take it, uh, Madhuri? So, ma'am, uh, I agree with Bharti sir. It's better to use a combination. We have a lot of new formulations. But in case again, it depends. You know, I don't like to mix my steroid with the with the moisture two products together. So I rather use the steroid first and then apply the moisturizer on top of it. If it is on areas like face, then I would like to use the moisturizer first and then uh, dab on the steroid. So that's how I go according to the body surface area and then use the preparations. But a combination any day is better. And it is right. shown. Studies have shown that the you know the flares go down when you use a combination, and you know you're symptom free for a longer period of time when you're doing this. Right. Can we have the next yeah, slide? Yeah, actually, while we're talking. Yeah, just one second. Yeah. You just change on the thing. See, one thing I'd like to say here. 
that uh, there are different ways of doing that, you know, as Dr. Bharti also said. One way is that right after a bath, you know, you hand, you know, you could give something like a moisturizer, you know, straight away. We don't know the exact period after which we can give a steroid, but roughly say after half an hour or after one hour, like I showed, you know, that is when you can apply the tropical steroid. <clears throat> so it could be moisturizer followed by tropical steroid, like Madhuri said that it's, you know, steroid up and moisturizer after that. So there are different ways of looking at it. Some patients don't have so much time. They can't keep applying one after another and they want to mix. I think that is also perfectly okay. Either use a pre-mixed or you can again mix it in different ratios, you know. They say that it could be in the ratio of 10 is to 1, you know, with a steroid. That may be a little difficult, but anything, you know, which is like 5 is to, you know, 1 or maybe even 4 is to 1 or 3 is to 1 is something that can be mixed and used because after all, you have to look at the convenience of the patient also. You wanted to say something, Tabish? Yeah, actually, uh, that is what I was going to add, that if the patient is in a larger area affected and uh, the time limit is there, so we can mix up the both the products and apply so that uh, you will require less of the steroids and the effective of the effectiveness of the steroid cream will be increased then because the moisture will help to penetrate the cream deeper. So larger area can be mixed up and applied yes. that give a better result and save the steroid also. Yeah, you can pairing. decrease the amount of steroid also sometimes, you know, when you take care of the mild one. The other question asked is, which is the best ingredient we can advise the patients to look for while buying cleansers for daily routine? This is quite a favorite question. Meera, would you like to take the question? I, I couldn't get it. Like in for Cleansers, you know, for the cleanser, what is the best ingredient to look for when you're buying a cleanser? Thing is like not depending on what exactly is the like okay because yeah. each skin needs a different kind of cleanser. Yes. You cannot say that like okay one kind of cleanser would. So let's say that for an oily skin, you know. Oily skin definitely like okay, we actually want to prevent something like okay the incidence of acne or like okay the uh, like okay the comedone so they are actually worried about too much of like okay this oiliness or something like okay this acid acid and that kind of like okay and then you know that actually helps to clean it better so the keratolytic things but some kind of patients you know they actually don't want it to get too dry also so it actually depends like okay where is some patient to patient so some patients actually want the skin to be too taut too dry whereas some patients like okay want the skin to be harming that like okay oilness to a little so that they feel that shininess is there so it actually feel, depends totally on the patient that's what i feel because the same kind of even when we prescribe for the acne like okay there are so many like okay cleansers for acne so some patients actually find like okay some of the agents are better whereas like okay the some patients don't like these uh, too like healing or that kind of things no so, uh, yeah, Madhuri, would you like to add to that any particular, you know, ingredient in cleanser? I know it's a difficult question. It could be a different thing, but maybe one or two things, you know, to do for I, I think cleanser. Meera's uh, rightly point, yeah. put everything together. Uh, main is, you know, uh, more than cleanser is the frequency of cleansing. I see a lot of patients, you know, doing it four to five times a day and it has shown it further, you know, disrupts your barrier function. So it's right. important you don't... Studies have shown that twice a day is good enough for acne prone skin. You don't yes, have multiple habits. Yeah. So that is one thing. And you know, surfactants you have to look for. You have to look for uh, for dry skin, as she mentioned, you have to look for things which are you know yeah. more hydrating, containing. And for oily skin, I like alpha hydroxy, beta hydroxy. Yeah, we mentioned alpha and hydroxy acid, I beta hydroxy, salicylic acid, acid, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that's first is that is what I wanted to say that maybe a salicylic acid. Uh, yeah. Face wash for an oily skin is good. Yeah. Or even a benzyl peroxide uh, face wash is good. Yeah. Somebody has asked ingredients, you know, the names. We can't really mention molecules, but I'd like to say that any of the standard products, you know, from any of the standard companies are what you should look for, you know, any of the good, you know, topmost names, they usually go in for very good tested product. I'm going to go to the next question. Rashmi, may I add? May I add? You just yeah. have to see that there are not, there must not be something which can cause allergy. That's all. Yes, that's I mean, important. Mm. Look for fragrances and say whatever preservatives they use. If they are not good, then they also can be a problem. Right. Can we have the next slide, please? Okay, so now I'm going to take one more question. I'm just going to ask one of you. 
can using moisturizer with a sunscreen product show good efficacy or we have to prescribe sunscreen in the morning and moisturizer in night for the patients madhuri would you like to say ma'am i would say uh, it is either way is fine you know if you have like a combination skin to normal skin you can and depending on the weather also so if it's a very dry weather you can you know uh, decide your product so i you have sunscreens with good uh, moisturizers nowadays you can if you want to use one in all and if your skin is extremely dry then apply a good moisturizer first as a base and then apply the sunscreen and not the other way around you have the sunscreen first and the moisturizer and obviously your dry skin needs multiple hydration so multiple times a day say two three times a day you will have to keep on applying a good moisturizer but a sunscreen with an spf 30 and a moisturizer is good enough if you want to use you don't have to separate them yeah sometimes you have a moisturizer added in the sunscreen but i would like to say if you ask me and you have a condition i would like to use them separately so maybe i'll use the moisturizer last goes actually the sunscreen that's what they say mm-hmm. but again it's your patient you know you have to customize your patient let so us say the patient the is busy those yeah. kind of things you know so you might have to then use maybe a pre made you know a sunscreen which has a moisturizer or something but you know otherwise it's ideally better that if you can use you know both of them together so i'm going to go to the next question from bhavesh what type of yeah. moisturizer is good after procedures peels lasers any personal do's and don'ts see actually uh, after peels and lasers the skin is already sensitive the barrier function is disrupted so i need something which is an emollient based moisturizer basically bhavesh can you speak so a little louder uh, please Yeah, can okay. you be a little so louder? I need an emollient based moisturizer basically because the skin is already, you know, barrier function is lost. So you have to maintain the hydration of the skin, which helps in rapid healing. So anything like, uh, you know, which has got glycerin, dye. Emollient. Form, you mean an emollient? Emollient. Yeah, yeah emollient based moisturizers do well uh, in such kind of because they give occlusion also. It helps to prevent the trans epidermal water loss also. So and this is how it helps in healing of the skin also. So I prefer a cream based moisturizer here, which has got a good emollient. uh maybe jojoba oil or some uh, butter so the butters are very good in that uh with jam oil also can good can you be a little louder please please uh, we yeah are, are you I able to listen to me now come nearer hello come nearer yeah so oh, really? they're missing out some of your words no i think yeah. i can tell you i think he's talking about basically that something there's a already an impaired barrier he says you know after the chemical peels and the lasers so something like a You know, okay, yes. uh, emollient actually, because emollient would have you know the repair that is of the barrier. So that's what he's saying that you have to use something. Yeah, am I audible now? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. yeah. So that is what emollient based moisture is very important, yes, so that you know it helps. Uh, it fills up the the gaps between the uh, epidermal layer, the stratum corneum, and it uh, that way it helps to prevent the trans epidermal water loss as well, and. Uh, uh, Sometimes, if the patient is uh, outdoor activity, then you can combine this guy uh, patient with uh, sunscreen and a moisturizer together in the daytime. Okay, so I think yeah. he's really nicely put it together. Um, I would want to thing. add a couple of yeah. things. One is, you know, there are newer agents like you know copper zinc and sucralfate, and also new growth factors coming in. Basically, they help with the epidermal cell turnover and increase the hyaluronic part also. and ingredients like hyaluronic acid yeah. antioxidants ceramics so these are you know vital i think also occlusion is important with uh, emollients in post procedure okay so uh, before we open it up to the you know maybe they want the live audience sumarita can we open it to the uh, live audience so uh, hope can we open it to the live audience Hello. Yes, ma'am. So the audience question, ma'am, so she said. So open it up to the um, audience. It is to the live the, audience. They are already getting yeah. the audience question, ma'am. Yeah, we are getting the audience question only, ma'am. Yeah, but can they also speak or something? Is that? I thought no, no, they no, could ma'am. be able to because, speak. Because uh, because they they show are both the different platform, na? Zoom and the YouTube. Yeah, but can we see them in grid view or something like that? No. Mm-hmm. Let me do four minutes. Oh, ma'am, it's a different format, so I don't okay. think. No, no, that's fine. They only said that you can, you don't know, do it live. So I don't know live. Actually, you there is a way you can see the participants also, which we have done before. So that's what I said. That is that possible? But otherwise, we are already taking audience questions because somebody has asked me. What I took up was audience questions only. Yes. Okay. Ma'am. One more. Um, I'm going to ask. Okay. One more question is there. Uh, yeah, by Dr. Rekha uh, Solanki. 
welcome you know dr rekha solanki is moisturizer should we be using a moisturizer or a toner or both so uh, roma could you take up that question that yes so um, when we talk about moisturizers and toners they both are two different uh, things and they both have different properties when we are talking toners we are talking something which is going to tighten up the skin pores and uh, help uh, the uh, oil or the transepidermal water loss so uh, it depends what kind of skin the patient has if the patient has dry skin uh, toners don't really hold too much of an importance if the patient can straight away use moisturizers but i think if they have a combination to an oily skin toners are uh, i think a big part of treatment because after you have used a gentle or mild cleanser or a cleanser of having salicylic acid or a glycolic acid you need to close down the pores which have been cleaned up and for that you can use a, a toner for me a to simple toner like a chill water spray is a toner by itself uh, right after a face wash you can make it fancy maybe by adding uh, stuff in it by rose water or even the market yes. toners like micellar water and all but then yes they are uh, uh, a toner is for for people who have a combination to an oily skin uh, followed by a moisturizer and again the moisturizer depends on the dry skin or again a combination skin or an oily skin you can choose your moisturizer wisely depending upon that but there are two different things and i don't think there is an option between the two uh, in my opinion okay so i we have few more questions she has very nicely talked about you know toners and uh, i very much like you know the rose water toner you know the easiest and the best you know i think it's very important to do that she said you know the open pores which are there when dr latika arya says that this is a wonderful discussion with very nice practical tips thanks latika you know for being here and i'm going to take sohail's question and then dr mankesh lal gambhir is also here so he says a hello to you also dr bharti sir so oh thank you dr gambhir welcome so, you yeah, are welcome here so sohail's question is if there's an option available which one would you prefer between cold pressed or conventional coconut oil bhavesh would you like to answer definitely the choice would be extra virgin you know coconut oil if it is available definitely definitely so, yeah what would you prefer Uh, however, uh, see, actually, uh, extra virgin coconut oil is available in the market uh, the nowadays. The cold pressed uh, one, easily. he says, actually. Yeah, yeah he's asking yeah, about cold it's pressed. Easily available cold nowadays, pressed. but earlier it was. It's it's not available in the smaller city, and people are not aware. So, if we can get extra virgin coconut oil, is better. But, but it's uh, expensive. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's why. So it depends. Like, I mean, metro city is easy and possible, and people can afford in metros. But uh, in small cities or towns, uh, uh, normal coconut oil is better. yeah so i think even the normal coconut oil is better although of course there are studies of extra virgin coconut oil but it's just that it's very expensive so dr gambhir is asking well explained about the use of moisturizers congratulations everybody my question is how much moisturizer should be applied in active patient thank you so much sir you know for coming and encouraging us so how much uh, moisturizer should be applied in active patients any of the panelists wants to take this up Yeah, actually, it depends. It depends the how, like how much is the need. Whether the patient is having a dry skin naturally or patient is having a no, acne, uh, acne. Uh, oily he's asking. Skin. Yeah, he's right. asking about acne. If you're see you the patient, which kind of patient you are treating, like if the before you start treatment, when you examine, okay. you have to find out how, what kind of skin patient is having, either dry or oily. Accordingly, you proceed, and it also depends on the response. Like how much is the dryness the patient is experiencing after using a retinoid or benzoyl peroxide or sometimes alpha hydroxy pills and all so uh, uh, it all depends on that if the patient is having lot of dryness i would as i told earlier also like the cream based moisturizers are very good uh, which are having both uh, the humectant quality as well as sometimes you know the occlusive quality also in that category uh, glycerin dimethicone uh, are very good uh, moisturizer uh, even the aloe vera is very good so these are the thing which i, I would uh, consider Yeah, I think he's rightly said that dimethicone is very good. So is glycerin actually added to it. You know, makes it so much more nicer. And aloe vera is something that we've not talked about so much. But aloe vera has been around. I think it's a very good moisturizer. I like using it. You know, when you have that dryness even under the eyes. You know, even for the dark circles and all. I just love using that moist aloe vera. And aloe vera has healing properties. It has anti-inflammatory effect also. So it yeah. is something that you know, which is very good for a moisturizer. Yeah. May I? May I? 
uh, whatever Dr. Gambhir has said, I personally believe that in acne as a first choice, if oily skin is there, I will not write a moisturizer. Okay. Unless I am using retinoids or uh, yes. agent, it will cause dryness. And then I will think about it, right? Mm -hmm. So, because so you that is what I told that, that you have to examine the patient well in advance before you start the treatment. Or you yeah. yeah, that's what he said that before or after, because usually after the topical agents, it becomes very dry. Otherwise, yeah. we never really want to, you know, give a moisturizer right away. The skin the barrier, point. which is also there. Yeah. So, there is another question. You know, I'm going to take up more questions by different people. Can I have the next slide while it's on? Because I'm looking at the questions also. And uh, Mala Bhalla, you know, welcome Mala. You know, thanks for being here. She says it's very informative. And then Dr. Renuka Astikar, welcome. Which moisturizer is best in adult onset atopic dermatitis when the lesions are on the face? So I think uh, we've already answered that and all. Would somebody like to talk about adult onset, you know, atopic dermatitis on the face? Meera, do you want to take that up? Again, adult onset atopic dermatitis, we have to actually go for something which is not sensitizing the skin because the moisturizer should then again irritate the skin. So we should go for a very light moisturizer, something like okay, the water-based ones, so which wouldn't actually cause too much of irritation. Because sometimes these patients have like okay, some of these moisturizers actually irritate and that can further exacerbate the like the atopic dermatitis. So we, we have to be very careful with that because some of these patients don't actually want to use too many products also. And we have to be very specific about like okay, a fragrant free moisturizer. And many of these patients actually have this extra photosensitivity and that kind of thing. So sometimes I prefer using a sunscreen which has a moisturizer so that would actually give a sun protective effect so that. I ask them to use in the daytime and something a plain moisturizer, like a, a very light one moisturizer in the night. Something like a glycerin based moisturizer, I prefer, like okay, the humectant kind of moisturizer. Yeah, so maybe at night, you know, because it's the face, and also if you're using the face, we have to use something light and more acceptable. So maybe a cream based one, you know. So she's rightly pointed out, you know, that that is what we can give. Dr. Sunita Nair Naik asked, role of hyaluronic boosters. Madhuri, could you take that? So hyaluronic boosters, I think she's referring to those injectable ones, which are, you know, kind of low weight, low weight hyaluronic acid, which are injected in the, in, you know, in this thing, in the dermis to kind of give that moisturizing effect and improve the light reflex. So it is a one-time session and there are injections which are available which you do once in a month and then it gives like a long-term relief. I like the newer generation ones which are just one time and I see a lot of repair in the barrier function. Uh, you know, it is uh, improving the hydration. Patients use less moisturizing and there's a nice shine because the light reflects better. So that is about a little bit about the boosters. But it also needs to be augmented with your routine. You cannot skip your routine if you're using a booster. Right. <coughs> So there's another question, you know, which one of the panelists can take up. What with patients with dry lips, which lip moisturizer is preferred, you know? I do like, you know, plain petrolatum jelly quite a bit. I'll be very I, frank. I, I, I agree with the, that. Yeah. And I like a lot of beeswax and, uh, you know. Um, yes. Aesthetically, kind of you know, you see, because this is an area where you can be quite aesthetic, you know, the lips yeah. and also beeswax containing things, you know, provided the patient does not... You yeah. know, atopic actually. And even that new vegetable oils are very good, you know, if you add them. So it yeah, some of the nice food. vegetable oils, something with, you know, maybe sunflower oil based or something like yes. that, you know, exactly. that is something that, you know, you could be using. There's one more question that I have that what about senile pruritus and what is the best? This is by Dr. Sunita Naik and also by Dr. Taslim Begum. Both of them have asked what is a good combination for senile pruritus? Thanks for a good discussion. Thanks, Dr. Sunita Naik, for being here. Uh, so, uh, actually, I anything uh, which, which uh, we have to combine a moisturizer when you're treating senile pruritus or senile skin, which is very dry, we yes. have to apply something which is humectant, which can absorb the moisture yes, and then occlusive over that so that it, the moisture can be trapped yeah, inside the skin. Yeah, water is not there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, what I do is that I ask my patient to put some glycerin in their bucket 
uh, and the uh, then uh, immediately after that they apply some white petroleum jelly or li- light liquid paraffin and they do wonderful uh, with that so that is how like we have to know the principle actually about the emollient uh, the humectant and occlusors and that is how you can plan your treatment and uh, choose a moisturizer if you know it well what is humectant what is the uh, emollient we have to go in depth of this uh, classification uh, that will help us to choose the right uh, moisturizer ready regimen reg- regimen for one particular patient may may i add here when we talk yes. of aesthetic eczema we should remember that the old men or old women may be taking some some drugs also which may include diuretics right we have to take care of that number 2 we have to take care the diet as i said in uh, earlier that moisturize from within so you have to take care of diet also you just can't keep on applying only glycerin and emollients and say ke aapka theek ho jayega you have to moisturize from within also you have to take care of the drugs the patient is taking and uh, then only you can plan something to give relief to a aortic yeah. eczema Yeah, Apart from that, we have to also point out question. about the diabetes or thyroid disorders. Very important. Yes. About that. Uh, we should not miss that. Uh, some patients are taking cholesterol lowering agents, and as Sir said, vitamin deficiencies. These are the uh, different things if, uh, which have to be looked upon when you are treating the patient. Yeah, I think uh, Doctor Kanchan Kumar is here. Very informative session, ma'am. Thanks to all. So, Doctor Kanchan has said, you know, that it's an informative session. One important question there was. I'm trying to look for it. Yes, this was about uh, Safia. You know, Tanim. You know about the role of oral moisturizers. Who would like to take that up? I think something like Dr. Bharti said. He was talking about diet. You know, and oral moisturizers. Yes. yes. <laughs> he was talking about the non-pharmacological right. methods. Yes. which i was very clear that uh, what you should eat is eat food rich in vitamin e for example green leafy vegetables wheat germ flakes drink lots of fluids stay away from sodas and drinks with caffeine and use a humidifier if required not only that you can have diet with garlic onion eggs asparagus yellow and orange vegetables unrefined cold processed flaxseed oil can be there in the diet all these things can help and flaxseed oil because contains three omega 3 alpha linolenic acid and omega 6 so it is very good for those things uh, these things i think oral when you talk of oral then yes if you're you talking supplements oral moisturizers, oral moisturizers yes yeah. the oral moisturizers can somebody talk yeah. about that actually oral supplements are there like omega 3 and 6 yes. fatty acids then you have your vitamin e oil and uh, even like, the evening primrose oil evening primrose oil also works very well can you also yes. have lot of these uh, you know ceramides which are there available i don't know how far they effective yeah and whether how have, far they work yes. you know if not apply it and all ceramide and then you have lot of this oral collagen nowadays going on that is the trend you know which again you know is not proven you know because you have to have the bovine one to be really effective and those are in tablet forms which are really very bad to taste and costly also and only one or two studies which are completely driven have shown the benefit so you know oral i as bharti sir said i think the internal hydration with your diet is more important than taking drugs right so, so earlier on to... our uh, elderly people used to take a lot of uh, used to take a lot of uh, ghee in their diet exactly yes which yes. i think we you all miss out on so i usually tell all my old I patients that you can please take at least is one spoonful of ghee every day in your diet uh, that actually helps a lot in the internal hydration of the skin yeah it Which, had uh, you know, somehow now is well said well said yeah a lot of good things you know it had you know which we've been really missing out actually so i'm coming to almost the last question sensitive skin we've answered you know what all will you choose you know what all kind of cosmetics if you have to you know choose for the you know sensitive skin because sensitive skin the only way to work on it is you say that two weeks you give a totally cosmetic free a total topic topical application free skin tell them that don't apply anything at all and then you examine and see whether there are any you know whether the redness has decreased whether some of the symptoms have decreased you know like burning and you know uh, tightness and all that and then you can introduce something so can you can somebody tell me that how do you introduce those cosmetics back actually because in case you have to do it you know can, for a can i come to the treatment uh, before that yeah. i i have a plan that rule out the cause number 1 take a good history do a patch test 
and discontinue all products as dr rashmi said and then gradually introduce what it to introduce advise mild cleansers chemical free physical sunscreens blend gentle moisturizers avoid products with hydroxy acid vitamin e c lanolin pg and retinoids and show empathy and add if required some tranquilizer this is my take on a sensitive skin because many a times you don't find anything to the list i would just like to add alcohol any alcohol based uh, ingredient in the moisture in the product should be avoided initially so this True. is always some amount of sensitivity is created by these isopropyl alcohols which they put yeah, yeah uh, this is stinging and sulfates so the stinging uh, sensation is uh, most of the times because of the isopropyl alcohol which is mistaken to be for something else uh, yeah i would like to add uh, one more uh, product that is called uh, menthol because it's a uh, very prevalent in india menthol and coconut oil menthol has to avoid it in sensitive skin apart from acetone menthol and what dr roma said about the alcohol so they all uh, cause lot of sensitivity and also look for parabens and sulfates because you know and lot of time people just layer too many acids with vitamin c also in skin because you know they are trying different products seeing the online thing so these are the things you have to take care of So when you're reintroducing a product, also as Bharti sir said, you know, add the sunscreen. Maybe add a hydrating serum first, which is you know hyaluronic based. And then once you're confident, then add a vitamin C. Don't start with that first. Yeah, I think if you have to introduce back, you know, cosmetics, there is a order which you know Zodiana Drillos, you know, in her article she has put that she says that introduce the lipstick first, you know. Then you know there is the powder. The powder makeup is the one that one has to go in more for, you know, foundations which. Maybe a little oily. Last would be the blush because people would ask you ultimately that the feel good factor and everything. So that is maybe the order in which you know you introduce back the. Ma'am, also there are a lot of these the mineral powder. based makeup nowadays which are very good for sensitive skin, which is what you can. They are a little costlier, yeah. but more friendly to skin that they, they can look the at. Things, but things with a little bit of a powdery component are always good. You know, when you pick up, you have a lot of them from India and abroad. You know. so those things can be done you know maybe wetting them a little bit you know would work if you have very 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 sensitive sensitive skin so i think uh, i'm going to just finish in the next one two minutes or so if that is okay few more questions very quickly uh yeah so dr premjot has asked prem gergila what is the choice of moisturizer for tsdf topical steroid damaged face just one one person each you know if you put answer you know mira do you want to take that topical steroid damaged face you know one moisturizer twice of moisturizer not one can you hear me mira no i i couldn't hear it like a typing sound like twice of moisturizer for topical damage steroid skin good moisturizer for top steroid damage skin steroid damage skin like okay actually the thing is like for the steroid damage skin like okay first and foremost like okay we have to see the age group like okay and see like okay what exactly is the, whether it is a normal skin or an old skin and go for a like again a moisturizer which is a dry skin then we have to definitely go something extra Like okay, moisturizing it. Whether specifically oily skin, it can also be lighter. But where our steroid damage skin is already a skin which where actually the total the uh, epidermal water loss is more. Actually, the skin is already damaged. So it's always better to like okay. But I usually prefer is any anything for them. Like okay, I actually make their skin or leave their skin free of any cream or application for a few days. Dress and then see the condition of the skin, and then only start with the moisturizing cream, depending on what the skin type is. Yeah, so uh, you know that has been taken up. One last question here is erythroderma due to psoriasis. When they're scaling all over, which is the best and affordable local application? I would go with Thank coconut you. oil actually. Yeah. Or any of the. Yeah, I agree to that. I agree to that. I agree to that. Yeah. So. Uh, Dr. Sakria has said the name. Thank you, respective panel, and Renuka, Dr. Renuka Astekar. Good and informative discussion. Thanks to all. Can I have the next slide, actually, because we've finished, but I just want to see we've covered. So I think seasons influencing the choice of moisturizers. It's yes. clear that in summers, go more for lotions and creams. 
and more of you know ointment forms in winters you know which can be done next please so i think we have already done this next next please this also we have more or less done uh, next yeah yeah because we are not going to influence and all that so uh, maybe hand dermatitis somebody could mention you know that what can be used you know for moisturizers for hand dermatitis yeah it should be more of oclusy type of moisturizer in hand dermatitis like uh, petroleum uh, petroleum jelly is the best thing petroleum is the best thing uh, what we can use sometimes uh, it, it may not be sufficient enough to give this thing so humectant over that you apply petroleum that will do very well and yeah. that is how you proceed in this cases and so i think that is how i would like to say dermatitis hand eczema then some barrier repair you know creams yes so yeah, is important and yes i was coming to that so we need definitely some kind of a barrier repair cream and the frequency yeah. of application is very important we need to tell the patients to very frequently applicate it's not yes. just something like we do for the body once in the morning and once at night we need to make sure that that we tell them to moisturize their hands every time they wash and they, you have to have a barrier repair cream at least twice daily along with your macrons and occlusive throughout the day maybe it could be even just coconut oil for that matter but yes yeah. about half an hour you would say before they have any washing activities they should yes. apply that yes. and then do it isn't it can we have the next piece because just before we wind up i want to see if we've left anything i think we have talked about barrier repair creams and remember that their ingredients have to be That's more of emollients yes so emollients are something like you know all those you know acids like combinations of oleic and you know dialolic acid that esters so that is what you have they have to be more of emollients for barrier repair function and they have a role same role is there in acne and you know rosacea so look for something which may be having you know even ceramides and other things they make it more expensive next please and uh, well vegetable oils we've talked about one last uh, can you have the next slide please in a label is there any particular thing in a sensitive skin that you should not be using we've talked about fragrance or something any particular one agent that you look for actually and ma'am paraben sulfates paraben is one even sodium you know lauryl sulfate yes sls yeah. would be another thing isn't it so that is something that we have to be a little careful about you know when we are looking for can i have the next please and uh, are there really any side effects of moisturizers Uh, yeah, it can cause uh, sensitivity, like you know, pointed dermatitis. It can lead to occlusion, leading to infections in the skin. Uh, sometimes in summer season, if you give, apply a mo uh, occlusive moisturizer, it can lead to malaria-like reactions. So these are certain things which has to be taken care when you are using a moisturizer. Yeah, I think also very important. You know, we are all going to be reaching, you know, the geriatric age. That is for sure. So we have to be careful in the bathroom because in the washroom, when we go and we take a nice, you know. we apply lots of moisturizers oils and we take a bath be little careful i used to always say that hold on you know to the handrails they are very slippery yeah so slippery. you do not want to fall you know because oil makes the oil and water mix makes it very 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 slippery more than the oil alone so this is one precaution because you do not want to end up with any kind of you know fractures or anything next please madam can i interrupt you for a minute it is said that above Hello? 60 you should not change in the bathroom Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Yes, yeah, that's true. Uh, Madam, that's can I just one. interrupt for a minute? Yeah. Actually, I am so thankful to invite me on the Women's Dermatology Platform, uh, okay. and I am sure that all women will be exciting to see a future leader uh, as you are going to fight the presidential elect, uh, election this time. And I wish you a very uh, best of luck from my side. And I am sure that you will do wonders in your. Uh, I, task. I I echo your sentiments, dear. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you, sir. thank you very much you know i'm very humbled by you know a lot of your kind thoughts you know which are there and uh, i'm going to come to the last question you know which we answered a lot of them what is your perspective on anti redness products in rosacea so would you like to take it meera very briefly because that kind of then ends we you know come to a full circle there are these uh, products which contain anti redness oil and 
kind of products now which actually work to an extent on prosthesia so some of these products actually show good results I, there were some products previously which contained this which was actually working really good but i think some of these products are no more available so and like okay some of the other products which have been claimed to be that good like okay they have they have some kind of like irritation but the product that had actually shown good result was the real containing products that is the one that i found working good but the others i found like okay then like okay some of these uh, my retinoin containing I creams also claim to work on the redness, like okay, but some of them also cause extra irritation in rosacea. That is what I personally felt. Right. Anybody wants to add something about anti redness product? She's given it very nicely, Mira. Ma'am, for anti redness, we really have the anti inflammatory components. So we yes. have to put at those agents, and you know, they're, they're there with your salicylic and you know, your uh, glycolic. You have your combination. With sterile alcohol, sterile alcohol, those kind of things, you know, they really calm down the redness. As Meera said, we had good ingredients, no more in India. Yes. But and you know, also, time, you yeah. know, glycerizine is another thing. Glycerizine, you know, compounds, because that has an anti-redness compound. You'll find this in a lot of your anti-redness products, which you get, you know, abroad. Especially in the US, when we pick them up at the American Academy of Dermatology counters, I'm missing it this year, you know, picking it up at the counters. You know. There is a but brand called Irigo. Romania. Yeah, we have webinars where we can't pick up those little, little creams, you know. So we are missing that out, you know. Uh, madam, there is a brand called Irizigo, which has got a vessel, the content uh, has got a vessel constitutive action, basically. Irizigo, so that, that's what uh, we can use in Rhodesia. I, I was not uh, naming the products, but uh, since you have named Irizigo, I would say for hand eczema. There was yeah. a product called Derma Shield, which was very, very yeah. good. Yeah, it was, it was wonderful. It contained dimethicone. Dimethicone. It had zinc and dimethicone both in it, and uh, it was very, very effective, very occlusive. Yeah, but is it there now? I don't think it's there. No, it's the not there. Shield is it's not, not there. there. It's not. But there. That's I why I said I'm yeah, missing you have, that. You have, though. There's no conflict of interest, but physio gel is there. Yes. Physio gel yes. is something you can use because the book of moisturizer gives you every name of moisturizer, so there's no conflict because you, all, all everything is given there. But physiogen is also good, you know, on the go. For For sure. Actually, a sunscreen is a very good anti-redness agent. I personally find that, you know, a basic Which one. Which a one? basic sunscreen also works like a brand. Yeah, yeah. It's also good anti-redness. Can we have the next slide? Because I think we are almost done. PDs, I think we've talked about PDs. Prescription emollient devices. Would you like a more expensive cream containing ceramides or just a normal cream would do? What is your take on it, you know? Ceramides add charm. Yes. Yeah, they do. <laughs> in a movie, if you have, you know, if you have, you know, more actors, you know, in the movie, you know, definitely it's a nicer, you know. Patient want patient shine. Patient they want a cosmetically air. acceptable moisturizer. So yes. we have to go for something which is expensive sometimes. Then it is a patient demanded it's actually. A, it's a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Depend on the patient demand. But and and it is expensive. They yeah, do sorry. have the additional benefits. There's no doubt about it. I mean, there is absolutely no doubt. They uh, they are more hydrating. They are more barrier repair. So they definitely help in your prescription. Yes. Yeah. But I think you know, besides that, you do have these butters that we talked about, which may be something nice. You know, the shea butter and the cocoa butter, and yeah. even the mango butters and all these nice butters. You know which are there, you know, the, the emollient part of the cream, they can also add to the aesthetic appeal. I feel that if you're using an aesthetically appealing cream, what happens is you tend to use, you know, it much better. So that is how, you know, it also lessens your demand of the cream because, you know, versus a very greasy, basic kind of a cream. But it depends on your pocket, the patient's pocket. You know, if you, you can go in also for a more reasonable, you know, emollient. Can we have the next slide? So I think we've almost come to the end, you know, I think everybody's looking relieved because, you know, uh, it's been, you know, throats have been running dry, you know, it's no, no more in the hiding range. <laughs> yeah. So it's been a good discussion. You know, we had nearly one hour. I think we've had one hour, 45 minutes discussion, which is quite good. You That's know. great. Very yeah. good. And thanks for, you know, sparing so much time in the evenings, because the thing is, I know that everybody is yeah. now back, you know, into their practice. So it's not very easy. So 
I'd like to tell everybody that, you know, all the participants, thanks for joining us. You know, I know that things have opened up and all. And I'd like to just say that please stay cheerful. I know that we are going through a very difficult time. And perhaps it will be more difficult, you know, in the next one or two months because, you know, of the opening up of the lockdown. But I think we just have to be very careful, you know, maintain the social distancing, the hand sanitization, which is there in cup tech, you know, etiquette. What we learned in the beginning is something that is going to hold us really, really carefully, you know, in spite of relaxation. We cannot relax, you know, with the rules. This is what I think we have to remember. So those who can stay at home, please stay at home and remain safe. So S stands for everything, you know, safety, your sanitizer, your social distancing. And, you know, so you have those basic, you know, four S's, which are very important. And I'd also like to say that those of you, you know, who are ID will members, please become e-voters. If you want a nice uh, association, you know, which is also strong and gives you a lot of things back, you know, that is when you need to e-vote. So become an e-voter, which is important. And do join us for more webinars. I'd like to tell you that there's going to be another very nice webinar next Saturday at 8 o'clock. So either have your dinner before or after. It'll be an international speaker program and it'll be about body pigmentation this time, you know. So please join us at 8 o'clock, you know, for a webinar, you know, next Saturday. That is on uh, 20th of... Uh, to thank my panelists, you know, starting from Dr. Bharti, sir. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rashmi. Thank you to you. Yeah, we enjoyed, you know, your perspectives. Then Dr. Bhavesh Swankar, you know, thanks for Thank being you, supporting, you know, uh, and joining us and, uh, you know, on this topic. Dr. Uh, Madhuri Agarwal, you know, you've been uh, always a very big, you know, charmer, you know, and you've given us some very nice, you know, answers to the questions. Dr. Meera James, you know, it's been an utter pleasure, you know, having you here, you know, all the way from Kochi. Thanks for traveling all the way from Kochi. <laughs> And thank and, you, ma'am, and yeah. wish you all and, the success. I'm actually looking forward to have you there as the president. Okay, a long term wait, and wish you all the very best. Yeah, thank you so much, Mira and uh, Roma. It's been, you know, we've shared, you know, history before also because I've left and you've joined. So, you know, we have a very old connection, you know, from Chandigarh. And thank you so much. It's been really great, you know, having you, you know. Thank you, thank, you, Dr. thank you, thank you very much, Doctor. Thank Rashmi. you. And wishing you all the best for all thank your future you. prospects and agenda. Yeah. And uh, let's all do it together. Right together. up there. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. We need to do it together. I think all of us. I stand for we. You know that is most important. We all stand. You know together. So that's important. We are all from different you know regions of the country. With that, I'd like to also thank Doctor Reddy's. Doctor Reddy's lab, you know, has been really very good. You know in providing us with a technical platform for holding these educational endeavors. Please look forward to the next endeavor on 24th of June. That is on platelet-rich plasma or PRP, which will be coming up soon. So that will be again in the scientific series. So thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. You know, please have a good dinner in your own place until we meet, you know, next time. Bye. <laughs> and lots of thank time. you. Bye. 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 Yeah, enjoy the session. See you. Bye. You have dinner at your own house. You know. <laughs> yeah. Your trip really is sponsored by IWDA. IWDA, yes. When it opens up, you know. Yes. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Thank you so much, Rita. Thank you so Thank much. You. Bye bye. Thank you bye, all the night. panelists for bye. sparing so much time. That is. The... Thank you so much. Yeah. Right. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hello, uh, Somarita, are you there? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, Somarita, ma'am, left. Uh... Okay, how many uh, participants were there? Yeah, yes, ma'am. I want to call you. Who's that, Sujit? No, uh, this is Jay Ganjan. Okay, yeah, Jay. So you'll be telling me later? Yes, ma'am, I'm calling you. Okay. Yeah.